Good morning, friends. I'm back with another episode of Most Cowbell, and today we're going to talk about some of the guitars that I got. I got uh, three new guitars. Two, two are old guitars that I had fixed up, but I uh, have some comments about them. And uh, also, uh, I got this uh, crazy guitar, the Evertune guitar. The, uh, I guess, depends on what you mean by tuning, but anyway, so just having my morning beverage. Mm. All right, so uh, we'll see you right after this. So the first guitar that I'm going to talk about today is this thing that I just got, okay, from the Evertune Company. They have taken a brand new Squire Tele, uh, vintage, I think, I don't know what it is, but it's really a nice guitar. <clears throat> Binding, the neck is fantastic, perfect. The uh, tuning, you know, tuners are good, all good. And it's got the Evertune Bridge, okay, which is, I bought it without really quite understanding what it was. You know, I was thinking Evertune is like that Gibson thing where the tuners tune themselves, <clears throat> which uh, was a grand experiment that didn't really work. But this, this Evertune thing is <clears throat> a completely different thing. It basically has a, a tension thing for each string. Each string has a different tension thing. <clears throat> and you adjust the tension uh, on the saddles here. There's a tension adjustment. And then, then what happens is if you press down too hard and you... It's very hard to get vibrato. That's one of the drawbacks with the Evertune system because it maintains a constant tension. You can get a little... A little tiny bit of vibrato, but really not much. And uh, it, it's it's always in tune, okay? And uh, you break a string, it's in tune. So uh, it's interesting doing this thing. Like I say, bending is an issue, but uh, I have found that a uh, baritone guitar, you don't really want to be bending notes anyway. I mean, the strings are so... You know, it's like 14 to 68, so they're they're big, thick strings, and you, you just don't want to bend them. You know, you just want a good, solid thing that stays in tune. So this is very good for that. So uh, anyway, this is this is a new thing. I really don't know. I just got it uh, yesterday, and I. Uh, it was, I got it, it was not in tune, oddly enough, but uh, it was very easy to tune it. You, you, you have to adjust the, the tunings up here. See, what happens is there's, there's a, a tension which below it, you know, these things uh, tune it up, but then you get it to a certain point and it stops tuning for, a, a, for you know, a bunch of winds of that, so. You get it into that range, and then it just stays in tune. You know, you try and put it in the middle so that that it can account for. You know, the thing is that it doesn't really keep it perfectly in tune anyway because we have equal temperament. Okay, now this is a concept that, like, I used to wonder why my guitars are out of tune because I would always tune them with the to fifths, like. doesn't really work 
in real life because notes like thirds and seconds and sevenths and all the other notes besides the fifths or the fourths are not quite perfect perfect in a perfect place <clears throat> so you actually have to to make it sound in tune you have to make the fifths and the fourths and everything just a little you know kind of sort of you know not exactly so there's no such thing as pure perfect in, in intonation unless you plan on never changing chords once you start changing chords like they say originally you could not play Bach on a perfectly tuned instrument because you needed what they call equal temperament anyway I know if you're not a, a music freak you probably don't care about this but anyway uh, basically this keeps this thing from at least not changing on you so you know what you're dealing with uh, now uh, I got a couple other guitars that I have had for a while that w needed work and so I just got them back last week so let me play you some of those okay so this is the the Fender um, Starcaster I think Anyway, I don't know. It used to say it on here, but this is not a this is not the neck that came on this guitar. This was a Squire, actually, and uh, I when I got it, I loved it, but the neck was always a problem. You know, first the the uh, the strings were jumping out of the nut on on the neck, and then I put a you know a couple extra string trees to make that go away, but the neck started warping sideways so so this um, so I had them I had my luthier put this uh, this uh, Stratocaster neck on it. It fit perfectly in the in the neck pocket, and it, it looks kind of correct for this guitar. I love the pickups. These Fender pickups, the uh, humbuckers, are great. Uh, the bridge. I was able to put this thing, which is a uh, well, another thing that has to be dealt with in the tuning issue department. But it, this is a um, a B bender. So I use this in Welcome to Desden Overland uh, to play like the leads and uh, you know it's pretty it's a fun thing you know with the uh, with to play these country licks <laughs> Anyway this is another thing I'm just getting used to but uh, this is a lot of fun and uh, so this is another guitar that I that uh, that I got back and having fun messing around with it. Uh, well, I don't think I'll be taking this on the road. I don't know. Maybe I will. I don't know. I don't know. You know. It seems like uh, I have more uh, drumming gigs coming up than guitar gigs. Although I do have. Uh, the, a guitar gig in uh, in June with my brother Joe and uh, Jules and Danny from BOC so that's gonna be fun doing a, doing a Billy Joel song so I don't know maybe I'll use this on that <laughs> no I think we're gonna try and rock it up more though not country it up so so probably not this but anyway and then last but not least a uh, guitar that you might have seen And the KG Cretan video last last week. So let me show you that. Now this is a Stumac guitar. Anybody, any guitar players out there, you know about Stumac. Stuart McDonald. It, they are a guitar parts, tools, and uh, luthier supply company. So they, um, so you've got a little 
a little bit of hum with this. This has got a P90 in it. It is a, it's a, it's a kit that I bought. The kit was, it was on sale, $75, $75 for the kit. So I got the kit, I put it together. I put this weird, uh, you know, um, latex pour on here and did all kinds of techniques that you can look up on YouTube how to do this kind of stuff. And, uh, and you know, it's kind of crude, crudely finished. I put the same technique on the headstock, you know, so it's really, like, weird. But uh, it, it actually, it felt kind of good. I brought it to my luthier, and he did an amazing thing where he just went through the whole neck, leveled all the frets, you know, uh, you know, fixed the ends. It just, it actually plays like butter. Not only that, but he fixed some of the electronics because the electronics were um, were not very powerful. So, but when I got it back, you see it has a P90 here. You guitar player. So the P90 is like a, a single coil pickup, but it's uh, the most powerful one. So it's loud, the loudest one. So. So when I got it, it was humming a lot and it was not very loud and it did not sound, you know, this is when I got it back from the luthier. And he had said, I put new, I put new pots in here and all this stuff, it was all good. And I was like, why doesn't it sound, it doesn't sound like I think it should sound. And so then I remembered that uh, anybody out there who's a guitar player that does not subscribe to the homeschooling uh, show, Tom Bukovac's weekly, well, he does it almost daily. He puts out these podcasts about how to play, you know, how to play guitar, how, you know, interesting licks, uh, theories on, you know, how to set up, a, how, to, how to wind your strings, all these kind of things, you know, just everything guitar, okay? And sometimes talks about life in general like I do, but, uh, one of the things that he says is that if you have a P90, right, people make the mistake of winding the pole pieces, these little screws, all the way up high to get a more output. But really, to get the best sound out of a P90, you take the pole pieces and wind them down so they're flat and then raise the whole pickup. Uh, high as high as you can without you know messing with the strings so I tried to do that and of course um, the the how this p90 is in here is it sits on a piece of foam and the foam pushes it up and the, then there's some couple of screws here that screw it down so to get the right place anyway the foam was too small okay that little piece of foam that it came with was was like this big and so I got a bigger piece of foam, like twice as big. I put that in there so that I could get the P90 close to the strings, as close as you can to the strings. So now it sounds like it should. enjoyed this uh, episode and uh, the new the guitars all the guitars the, these three new guitars I sold all these guitars and now now the uh, acquisition comes again anyway hope you've enjoyed the show 
Have a great week. We'll see you next week.